Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of What's New in Laravel. I am Mohamed Saeed and today I'm going to show you what the awesome people of the Laravel community has been working on lately, starting with the new lazy loading prevention mechanisms. A few days ago we added a method that will prevent lazy loading model relationships in your application. This will help you avoid the n plus one problem. Just add model prevent lazy loading inside the put method of your of a service provider and Laravel will throw an exception if you have code that causes the n plus one problem. That's awesome, but maybe it was too strict. For that reason, we made a change recently that will only throw the exception if the number of records in the collection is more than one. If the collection, if the eloquent collection have only one model and you try to lazy load relationships on that model, the exception will not be thrown. Because if you think about it, in that case, the n plus one, the n and n plus one is going to be one. So there is no problem here. Another enhancement is that we made it possible for you to customize what happens when lazy loading is detected. To do that, you need to call the handle lazy loading violation using method on the model and pass a closure. This closure accepts the model instance as well as the relationship name. Whatever you add in this closure will be executed whenever lazy loading is detected and the exception will not be thrown. So maybe you only need to log the incident so your team can investigate it later. So let me paste this block of code here and now whenever lazy loading is detected, this line will be added to your log file. With that in hand, you can enable lazy loading prevention in production since users will not get affected because an exception will not be thrown when lazy loading is detected. Only your team will get notified so you can fix the issue without affecting your customers. In this episode, we also have a brand new feature related to eloquent models, specifically related to broadcasting model events. Previously, if you want to broadcast model events, you would have to create a custom event class that implements should broadcast, and then you register this class inside the dispatches event model property. With the new addition, all you need to do is add the broadcast events trait to your model. Inside the web.php route file, I have a model, a user model being created. So let's visit this route to create the model. And because I'm using the log broadcasting driver, the event that was just broadcasted should be stored in the log file. So let's go to laravel.log and here we are. We can see that Laravel automatically broadcasted the user created event on a private channel dedicated to this model. And inside the payload, you can find all the model attributes. That's very convenient. And when you are registering your channel authentication callbacks inside the channels.php file, you may use the model class name as the channel name. So we remove that here and use the model class name. If you are broadcasting model events in your application, go ahead and check the documentation of this feature. I'm sure you love it. I'm also sure that you're going to love the refactoring that you are going to do to your application to implement this feature. I know all of us developers love refactoring. We know one of the things that makes Laravel great is that it always works on enhancing the developer experience. Even the smallest of features count. One of these enhancements is adding the new force option to the storage link command. Previously, to change the link, you would have to remove it and create a new one. No more. Another enhancement is about the db command, with adding the new read and write options. If you have separate read and write connections configured, you may use the read and write options in this command to connect to these separate connections. Finally, we have a new feature added to mailables. Let's go to this newsletter email and now we can add a middleware function inside mailables. This will configure the queue middleware that will be used when dispatching this model to the queue. So let's return an array of middleware here. Let's use the rate limited middleware. And now whenever this mailable is dispatched to the queue, Laravel will apply this middleware. Now let's move to Laravel Octane. Octane is great. It makes your application run faster by running it in stateful mode. But one of the side effects of running your application in stateful mode is memory leaks. To help you detect memory leaks easier, Octane will now show you the allocated memory with each request. So let's start an Octane server and then visit the endpoint in the browser several times. 
Now you can see if the memory allocation is growing, which indicates a memory leak. Finding the memory leak is still tricky, but at least now you can detect that there is a memory leak in your application so you can investigate. Infinite scalability. That's the promise of serverless. And Laravel makes running your application in the serverless environment quite easy. Just go to vapor.laravel.com, create an account, and start deploying your application to the serverless environment. However, with infinite scalability, one must worry about the possibility of denial of service attacks. But Vapor got your back. We are proud to announce the availability of Vapor firewall rules for basic protection against denial of service attacks and unwanted pot traffic. Check the documentation to find more details about this feature that's available to all Vapor customers. With just a few additions to your vable.yaml file, you can enable this feature. Try it out. That's all I have for you in this episode. Make sure to check the Laravel blog at blog.laravel.com to find more information about what's new in Vapor, Forge, Envoyer, Spark, and everything Laravel. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel in order for you to be informed whenever we post a new video. Thank you, have a great day, and happy coding.